one of those moments where I realize I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I just went, I just went west to Denver, turning around and heading back. I need a tornado so bad right now, like a real tornado. <sighs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Shut up. I, <laughs> I might be going insane. I just turned around again. <laughs> yeah, that's me. So you might be wondering, why am I using this outdated meme? Let's go back. Way back. In January of 2019, I promised a more active year for tornadoes on the high plains. Well, that happened. Big time. But good weather conditions for tornadoes do not guarantee a good experience for an individual storm chaser. See, I had a really successful outing in mid-May with the McCook storm and bagged several tornadoes. However, I had to make a quick trip back home to finish up some normal work, and that made me miss out on the high-risk event of May 20. Not to worry though, a relentless trough brought on by a good background state and the onset of a major jet extension meant that this period of high tornado activity was far from over. However, Things for me started off a bit silly. A cold core tornado event was in progress on a day that I had dismissed, even though I could have left earlier and then saw a couple of tornadoes on my way down to the southern plains. This of course was much easier to forecast in hindsight. Cold core events aren't my forte and I have little experience with them. Still, it stung. Maybe I can reverse fortune by having a lucky beer. Good morning, welcome back. After a brief hiatus, Wednesday, May 22nd. Today's been an interesting forecast. Not really anybody thought or had any faith in today, except me and a random smattering of a few other people. I was seeing today's praises for a while. What we're struggling with is height rises, which means uh, as the trough is lifting north, the air pressure in the mid-levels is increasing, which suppresses storm development. However, it doesn't mean or preclude storms entirely. It just means it's less likely to get them to form. In fact, uh, all of the uh, convection allowing models seem to form something uh, out in that warm sector. Today went from being a uh, meh, not gonna happen to a, uh, oh, hey, this looks kind of semi-serious. So, uh, almost literally overnight. But this kicks off what looks like an entire week of severe weather out on the plains, thanks to a persistent southwestern trough and southeastern ridge in the United States that's just going to keep pumping flow over the plains for days and days and days. Hey, yay, yay, all the flooding. This is just, the flooding's just gonna kill things. I just know it. I feel like I'm gonna end up stuck somewhere or not able to uh, pursue a storm because of uh, flooded out roads. It's just water everywhere. I don't know if you can see that river out there, but yikes. We've been upgraded to a moderate risk. That's a 24-hour change of general thunderstorm to moderate. At least I know there's a there's hope for me in a second life doing uh, SPC forecasting, I guess. There are multiple thunderstorms that uh, will be firing up probably between Oklahoma City and Tulsa and roughly Joplin, Missouri. In that swath there is some really, really bad flooding right now. The Cimarron River is completely over its banks. Um, there's areas of fields that are just lakes right now that uh, aren't supposed to be. But southwest Oklahoma might get a few storms um, uh, later in the day, but it's a gamble. Uh, it's not as likely uh, that we get storms at all, but at least safer, hopefully more photogenic, away from flooding and bad roads. If something happens down in uh, down southwest of Oklahoma City, uh, maybe down in the Wichita Mountains or Lawton, then uh, I should be there to see it today. And if it busts, then I just will get a jump on driving out west uh, towards Amarillo, which will be next uh, the next day's target. Okay, things are getting interesting really fast. So remember, or earlier I had just mentioned that uh, we thought uh, development would happen to the northeast of Oklahoma City, but instead it's happening to the southwest. There's already a severe warning storm. I'm not sure if this is gonna be the storm of the day or not. It's uh, looking good though. We have ourselves a raging supercell down in Geronimo, Oklahoma. This day got off into a big hurry. Ooh. 
little bit of a walkout. And it looked pretty imminent a few, so maybe 20 minutes ago, but now it's uh, kind of just petered out a little bit. It's just a nice long base. Well, the gamble didn't pay off. That was a mess. This part of the video is gonna look a little weird probably because it looked like a storm was really getting going and then it died. I thought it was gonna pick itself back up again. And then I went to another storm and it died. And then I went to another storm and it died. And then I went to another storm and it died. Quite a few tornadoes reported in Northeast Oklahoma. What can you do, you know? That was a 80-80, 80% chance of a tornado, 80% chance of a strong tornado, tornado watch. So first uh, first chase out on the plains of my epic, what's probably gonna be a seven or eight plus day long storm chase marathon uh, ends in a bust. You gotta love the Wichita mountains. Nothing could look more out of place in Southwest Oklahoma. One state down, many, many to go. There's no storms left. I usually get, you know, after dark, there's storms just raging off in the distance, and lots of lightning, and there's lightning to photograph, but not today, nope. We're uh, just dealing with sadness, storm sadness right now. Time for me to get up to Texas, and get some sleep. Try again tomorrow. And my drone is halfway to the Missouri. Happy days. The failure mode of today is boundary orientation. Storm motions are going to be meridional, which means that the flow pushing them is going to be more north than west. Uh, then there's a high chance that uh, many storms form uh, that begin to interact with each other or end up going over the same ground over and over again. So you get training and you get destructive storm motion or destructive storm interference. One storm raining onto the inflow of another. Worst case scenario, you get extreme upscale growth into a mesoscale convective system, which turns one or two storms into a dozen and then eventually just one big line. Lines really suck in this situation because that also means that much of the downstream environment gets ruined for the next day or could um, in some cases. Uh, resulting in one day being bad and wrecking the chances for the next day. It's Thursday, May 23rd, and today we have an enhanced. We have an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms, 10% hatched area for tornadoes. It's only 10.30. I don't have to move anywhere. What do I do with myself? Might as well get some allsups. I didn't already mention it, I'm hanging out in Shamrock, Texas. Nifty little town on good old Route 66. Damn this haze. Well, I'm in uh, Tulia, Texas. And some storms are firing off to my west, but they look like they're going to cross the warm front. And I see a lot of agitated cumulus around me. Something can happen out of here. Anything. I'll be here for it. Patience, patience, patience. Must learn patience. A different kind of nemesis would appear on this chase. Massive wildfires down in Mexico were pumping smoke into this whole storm system. This would either moderately or severely affect visibility for several days. Some storm chasers would even miss tornadoes because of it. At any rate, two eagle-shaped supercells would form to my south, and I raced down to meet them. But it's the second one that I'm interested in. I held my breath while gusnadoes swirled under the inflow of the first storm. But I finally got into position, and once I had a chance to remove the seat cushion from my posterior, I was able to get some quality time with my target storm. So I'm having a pretty good storm chase so far, uh, south of Lubbock, Texas, actually, and under some gorgeous structure. I don't know if this storm's gonna be the one to do it, but uh, it sure looks great. A little while later, the storm would produce this Gus NATO.
Then moments after, this, well, I'm going to call it a tornado, there's a funnel, a weak ground circulation, and someone else called it in. Besides, a wise man once said, When in doubt, you count it, and you move along. May have condensed all the way to the ground. But I think we got one. I think we're counting it. It was reported by others as well. I don't know if it'll uh, get any standards yet, but... All right, I don't know if this is coming through okay, but we had a bull funnel. Actually, a couple of bull funnels. Twin bull funnels for a minute. But uh, we may try again here in a few. And we're just trying to get out ahead of it and get to where we can uh, get some good contrast. It's getting dark, getting tougher by the minute to chase this thing. I'll keep up with it as long as I can. Okay, I am this chase uh, just to the northwest of Lubbock, Texas. Just watching a lightning show. Actually, I let one storm go by me and another storm take its place. I'll show you the radar screenshot. That's freaking crazy. Three Eagle supercells right in a row just lined up. One right after the other going right over the top of Lubbock. Um, one maybe tornado out of all of that though. So, time to head back to the hotel. I might even photograph some lightning. It looks like it's going to storm all night long, which sounds awesome. All right, second day in a row in uh, Lubbock, Texas, and I just barely got done eating breakfast, and I'm already on a storm southwest of town, and it's a severe warrant. Uh, I guess I won't even bother with the forecast because there's a storm. So this is sort of feeling like deja vu. I'm chasing the same roads in a similar looking storm in the same area that I was not 19 hours ago. But uh, here we go. Here I go chasing again. This storm is crap. All right, you see that faint blue line right there? I'll even draw it. That one, that's no bueno. That means outflow. That means no tornadoes today. But look at that storm. Maybe this will do something. This one does not have the blue line of death. Yeah, right now it's not doing much. Uh, a little bit of hail and some rain coming out of it. Uh, it has sort of a fuzzy base. We'll see if it, uh, doesn't do something in a little while here. Uh, what it does have going forward is it's in cleaner air and uh, it's got some good southeasterly winds feeding into it. So. failed chase day. You take them, you take them, and then you take the wins. It's just how it goes. Well, I think I'm going to go up to Amarillo and uh, hang out with some friends and get into position for probably up in Dodge City or uh, Liberal Kansas, something like that. Faced with the choice whether to build an ark or go eat some steak, I bailed on this chase. Check out the Sigma Mattis though. So yeah. I didn't get a chance to forecast this morning, but this was not going to be a big day. Uh, it just had very slight props um, that uh, we might get a storm that uh, could put down some tornadoes. Instead, we got a bunch of flooding. Holy crap. North of Lubbock is just an ocean right now. It's just all water. It's just one big farm insurance claim.
everything's bigger in Texas. Ended up, up to Amarillo to have some drinks with some friends. Beer, steak, and some good friends ought to make up for the rather lackluster day. And we weren't the only storm chasers with that idea. The entire Texas Tech University's Taurus Project team joined us. Driving Doppler trucks, mobile mesonets, flying drones, and manned hurricane hunter aircraft near tornadoes sounds like one heck of a way to spend your summer break. This will conclude the first half of my storm chase vlog. Coming up in the next one, Colorado chaos, Kansas agony, and an imperial march. I'll also be grading my 2019 forecast. Thanks for watching. If you survived, I mean, liked this video, then like, subscribe, or drop me a line below. Thank you.